Welcome everyone. I hope uh, you had a great time until now. I'm, I'm, we are going. I'm very excited to be here, and I'm, we are going to look at some test, test practices and information I managed together for from some time now. Um, well, let's start a bit. A little bit about myself. My name is Eddie. I'm working at Red Hat for the last five years as a software engineer. Um, my development career started with with no test at all. I I didn't know about what is a unit test. The QA team has never tested something automatically, although they wanted to. So I ha had to start uh, learning about this stuff myself and try to practice it little by little alone. Um, and from that time, I, I, it was one of my, I consider it one of my big steps forward because it really helped me do my work better, faster. And from then I am always trying to get improved in this area. So we will start with some basic uh, definition about testing just to be in sync. And later we'll uh, jump in into some practices that I consider useful. So what is testing? To me, it's, it's pretty basic. It, it, allows, it allows me to write. And uh, I think for the company that uh, produces the software application uh, to increase quality, it helps development itself because we are not going into loops between uh, trying it in the lab and going back to the editor. And it also has some kind of documentation. It expresses the, the usage of how you use the, the, the software that you, or the application that you created. It shows you if you, if you, it makes sense or not. Um, a testing level. So we know there are, uh, there are more probably levels than these three that I, I show here, but uh, let's focus on those because they are the main ones. Uh, developer writes a little bit of code. He either starts uh, writing the, the test before, which is TDD, it's a unit test, or he te uh, writes the test after. After it, it, this uh, loop between test and uh, writing the product, the code is uh, pretty short, a few, between a few seconds to a few minutes. Integration tests is when we start testing components um, to check if they are interacting correctly, if there are, uh, if our API makes sense, if there are other problems. And eventually we reach uh, the system test where uh, Conventionally, it was in the QA department's uh, area domain, but uh, lately, I think in, in many places, it's it's already started in the development and they share the the end-to-end -end test between development and QA. Uh, my in all the points that I'm going to speak about here are are pretty much um, should fit all of these levels. If there will be something specific, uh, I will try to, to mention it. I intentionally did not uh, took principles that are fitting only one of them. Um, some test definitions. So how does a test look like when you write it? It has a setup. It has a exercise, which is the operation that you are trying to check. It has a verification of what is that uh, operation that you try to check, the outcome of it, and it has a teardown where you clean up or do other uh, other operations to, to continue on to the next test. The setup and the teardown is, uh, they are called, there is a, has another name, which is a fixture. It, uh, and the exercise and every verification is uh, the test body. Assertion. Assertion is, is the, is the check or the verification of uh, between the expected and the actual results that we have. They usually come up in the, in the verifications step, but they can also come in the setup and in the teardown 
because they are it, it sometimes help us to check that we are not continuing on with our test um, if if it's not if the environment is not ready yet or the given uh, requirements are not there yet some uh, some test framework are, are even uh, raising different errors if if there is a problem in the fixtures or in the in the test body itself they will you understand that it's not that your uh, test uh, test the thing that you try to test is problematic, but it's actually the the environment that you try to build in order for the test to exist is problematic. And the last two is about skipping and focusing. Uh, skipping is uh, is just um, choosing which test not to run, and this can be done in uh, explicitly by the one who runs the tests. So he, for example, he chose, chooses to run only tests that they, he cares about or only tests that are fitting a specific uh, setup. And there is another one is, that is also explicit. If a test author is writing inside the test that he is not, he does not want to run this test because, for example, he knows there is a bug or it was not implemented, so we'll skip it. We can, we will talk about some of the problems with it, but uh, in the next slides. Uh, and the last one is the condition uh, skipping at runtime. This can happen when you have, a, for example, a Windows uh, environment and this test that you are trying to work on now, or want to run now, it doesn't fit Windows. So you are checking what is the operation system that you run on. And if it's Windows, then you skip it. It has some, pro this is very dangerous actually. and. You should be careful, and the reason that it's dangerous is because um, you may pass a green, uh, have the test screen, but you actually did not run the test. So you, you should be careful not to to check at least what you skipped here. And focus is actually the opposite. The op uh, it's usually I'm, I found it useful when when I was trying to debug or develop a specific uh, portion of the code is you run you run it uh, for example you run a specific test only that test and and try to see that you can try to pass it or it exercises whatever you want it to do there is one thing that is important here is that in order to be able to do this you need the test themselves to be isolated which means they should not be dependent on each other because if they are then you may run a test and and it will fail just because uh, some other test did not run so you should be careful when I mean, you should be careful not to have written tests that are not isolated, and we will also speak about this uh, in some next slides. So let's start with uh, the practices. I'm going to to present here uh, some points, and I'm going to give some examples in in Python and in Go. In Python. I don't think there is any any other framework over PyTest. Anything else? I'm, I think no one is using or little people are using. And uh, and also in Go we have there are many frameworks. In this case, I'm going to to give example in, in the one called Ginkgo. So my favorite first principle. Um, I know this principle actually from. Uh, from my days as a support engineer, it's uh, you need all all the time. If you if you think that something is problematic, you should always try to see that it fails. And only when when it's uh, when you think you fixed it, then you can say okay, it, it passed. So writing test is the same. You want him, you want the test first to fail, because yeah, that means that uh, it does check something, and you intended it to fail. And now, now you can fix the problem or adjust the production call or adjust your environment so it will pass. Otherwise, if you are not doing that, you may have tests that are running, that you wrote that are running and they will always pass. It happened to me from, it, I mean, it happens to me once in a while and because I'm not uh, doing my own uh, principles. So you should be careful about it and I really recommend you to exercise this always. Yeah, if you if you excel, if you work as a developer and you write unit tests, then uh, if you practice TDD, then it's embedded in it because you write the tests much before you write the production code. 
the body vs fixture in test. So we, I spoke about it a little bit earlier. We have an interest to separate between uh, setuping and tearing down the tests in uh, given requirements uh, vs the actual test that we are trying to to check. So here is an example in Python. We have a, we create a dog. We tell him to run, and then we just check that he is really running. This is uh, the creation of the dog is embedded inside the test. So if it fails, um, we also have, will get an error and we'll, we'll think that the, the dog cannot run, but it actually cannot be created. So what we can do is to mark the dog creation to have a picture of the dog creation. And uh, it's teardown. It's in, in PyTest, you can create a, um, a setup and teardown the same in this way. And the test only includes the run, uh, the execution of the running for the dog and its assertion that it is running. Isolation, this is something that we also raised before. This is, uh, we are talking about making sure the tests have no dependency to, with other tests and uh, that we are a good citizen. In, in order to allow that, we need to be good testers or good citizens and clean up our, after ourselves and not leak the state of, of some object or some environment to the next, next test. Here is an example in Ginkgo. This may be a little bit uh, more messy than PyTest, but uh, hope you'll bear with me. Uh, we have a, a dog that is created globally and we tell him, uh, we tell him that he is hungry in the setup. This is the before each function. We tell it it is hungry and we give him in the test itself, we give him the, the, the goulash to eat and check that he's no longer hungry. This is the problem with this, uh, this test here is that we have not, we don't know what is the current uh, state of the dog. If, if, the, if making him hungry or telling him to eat has all kind of uh, side effects in its states, so the next test that will run over the dog, let's say the same test, it may behave unexpectedly. So it will be nice to have the state of the dog cleaned. So I, I chose to reborn him. Um, so we, what we can do, one option to do is to add, add another setup fixture before the before the test starts and tell him to be reborn so at this after we tell him to get reborn it, the dog state is clean and we can continue on the problem there is still a problem here and the problem is that we have no control of what happens with other tests so if someone wrote a test and used the dog uh, and he didn't uh, call the this uh, reborn function then then you will have a problem so if we want to control it and make sure that everything is fine, we should just clean up after ourselves. So in this case, we add the reborn of the dog at the teardown step. This is the after each here. Um, and, and then any test can use the dog again with a clean state. This is true, by the way, with uh, databases, with anything that you can think of and that you want to revert to the previous state and clean it up. So the next text, next test will not assume anything. Keeping, keeping assertion visible. This is about where you should do the, the assertion execution. If we do it inside the, here's an example in Ginkgo as well. If we do it in helpers, then when I when we read the test itself, in this case, the developer that writes um, buggy code. So here you see the function write code. And when you look at it at the test level, at the test body, you see that you don't see if something was asserted. The assertion is deep inside that, uh, that function. And this is just a simple example. But if you have like 20 calls inside and the last one is asserting, you have a uh, big trouble of uh, have exposing where it happened, why it happened, what happened in between. Uh, you have you can you have real problem collecting the data when it it blows up. So so it is useful if you can um, 
avoid that and try to move the assertion to the test body where it is visible. In this case, what it's a simple solution here with, uh, with Go, we just uh, pop up the, instead of asserting inside the helper, the helper just returns the error and uh, we can assert the error at the, at the test body. If, if it was PyTest, for example, uh, we could catch the uh, exception from, from the helper and then, then do whatever we wanted to, to do, to assert whatever we wanted here. Uh, traceability. Um, so traceability is, is, uh, is about finding if, if there was a failure, finding out where the, where the failure was, what the failure is, uh, trying to understand as much as possible, collect as much um, information as possible. So in this, in this context, uh, we want to have um, the assertion uh, well, uh, blo I mean, exposing all the information that is important, like having a good test name, having good variables names that were asserted and, and the content of it and the framework should provide us the, it in a nice format so we can see it. Um, obviously we should also be, it should be very easy for us to understand where exactly it failed because we may have multiple asserts in the, in the, um, in the test, so we want to know where exactly it failed. There is also another another point which which may be helpful to trace uh, trace the the problem is to have correlation between IDs used in the test and uh, IDs used in the logs of your system. For example, I'm working mainly with a virtual machine, uh, so if if I have a, if I have a test that tests a virtual machine and this virtual machine has this a unique ID, a name with a prefix or something, then we want to have it uh, to be able to trace it in the logs as well. So it's important to include it in the test uh, logs as well. Uh, we obviously should collect all the information when the test fails. This means we should go uh, have some reporter to, that goes to the system and collects all the logs from all, all the components and gathers them in, in, a, in a place so we can check them. And for logs, there is a, another small point that it, it, you may find useful. Uh, we found it useful a lot of time is that we can inject a, a label or a marking inside the logs of your system from the test. So you will be able to, to track. You can, you can look in the logs of your system and see that at this point, the test started because it injected a, a record there. And when it finishes, it also injects a record. So it should help you understand that these logs are belonging to the, to the test itself. Shared resources, oh, that, that's uh, one of my favorite. So it's usually not a problem in unit tests to have, uh, to create resources and uh, destroy them on each test. But if you are working in an end-to-end -end test and you have some uh, heavy, heavy duty resources like creating a database or creating a virtual machine, for example, depends. Then you will, sometimes you will like to reuse it in multiple tests and not create and destroy them each time. So here it's, a, it's an example in PyTest that you have a, a virtual machine, a Fedora virtual machine as a fixture. And uh, it is used in two tests, in the connectivity test and in the console test. In the, in the way you see it now, it, it creates and destroys the virtual machine each time uh, for each test. But we can do a very small addition here or change uh, to just add the scope to the to the fixture. In Python, it's very very easy, and you tell it it's a, the scope is a module. So the the test each test we have two tests here that uses the same fixture. So the, they will just reuse the same virtual machine. The first one that will come, that will run, will create the setup. And the last one that will run, will just call the, the teardown part, the deletion here. Mm. About continuing on failure. So it, the, I, I was involved in some project that uh, it, when you run a suit of tests, it failed on the first one that, uh, that was encountered, but that's, so it is useful in sometimes many when you try to, 
to debug something or when you maybe run it locally to understand what's going on. But in if you are if you're running it on a CI, you will probably want to to run all your test suite and the ones that are failing, you want to try to understand if there is any correlation between the tests that failed. So you have the interest to run them all. X fail. This is a term uh, mainly used in in PyTest in Python. Uh, it, I did not see it uh, uh, used in in other places, and I I found it uh, very useful when I was developing in Python, and I think it's useful for anyone. So uh, it talks about expecting to fail. So we may have uh, a test that was not implement that was checking a non implemented feature or it, it uh, exposes a bug. Someone wrote uh, the test because uh, to recreate the bug and the fix was is not there yet. So we want to, to run the test, but uh, tell, tell ourselves, I will say, that we know it is failing, we reference the bug and uh, we expect this specific error. So this is how it looks in this case. I'm giving an example of um, of Slack making us coffee because usually this is the only thing that it doesn't do yet. Um, so we are creating the Slack. We are telling it to to make some coffee for us, but we know it is not implemented yet. So we just wrap it as XFEN and tell what's the problem. Uh, that test is also related to the previous uh, X file is be careful, we spoke about skipping earlier. Be careful not to always, be careful not to run um, tests like this. This is a, the test, uh, a test about dog talking. So if we mark it like this, it means that it will be skipped always. It will never try to talk, uh, to run the execution. But if we mark it like this as X fail, then we tell the, the test that we are expecting to fail. And uh, this is the exception that we are expecting, a tribute error, and it will always run it. So um, it is important try to try not to leave dead code, which is dead test in, in, in your code base, on your test. Um, parallel test is a big subject. We probably can take a full lecture about it, but uh, just be careful when you, when you think about parallel testing the same system, uh, you can run multiple tests in parallel against the system. It may save you some time, but in, on the other hand, it may also cause you some rand randomness in the execution because you may have collisions and you need to take care of them. So you need to balance between uh, time and uh, randomness uh, failures. Randomization and logic is to be careful and not to put uh, a lot of uh, random input in your tests because that's, uh, we do usually write tests that are expe uh, what we, something that we expect deterministically. If it's random, then it can cause other problems, but it, it may appear in a different test suit. And logic is to limit the logic of a test. It should be pretty uh, simple and not uh, complicated with if statements. Um, the last thing is uh, some anti-patterns, I will say. So one of them is stopping on failure. Uh, this is good for the, the when you debug some, something, but it is usually not that good when you want to see the whole picture. And uh, cleaning up at the setup and not in the teardown, it, uh, uh, we talked about it, it's, it's uh, problematic because we don't know what will happen to the next test. So if we do that, it's uh, half, uh, half a solution, not a full solution. And that's it.